Welcome artists. I'm so glad you're here with me for a painting experience I truly enjoy. And the topic for this tutorial is why would you choose a blue underpainting? One of the most common questions I get is how do you make your underpainting selections? Which colors should I use? So this video should help you if you have that question. And by the way, this is the Monet Cafe version with limited content, but still a lot of great material. For the full video tutorial, feel free to become a patron of mine for only $5 a month and help support this channel. Now, let's get started with the lesson. While we've been in this crazy time in our world with the coronavirus, I've been trying to get a little exercise by running along the neighbor's cow pasture. <laughs> and I spotted these lovely little flowers and I snapped a photo and it became the inspiration for this painting. Now I had called this painting Morning Devotion. I really don't like titling my paintings. So I did something neat. I decided to uh, post a picture of it in our community tab on this YouTube channel, Monet Cafe. I gave you guys the opportunity to give me title ideas and I chose the one from a moo 9505 called in this moment and it was the perfect title for me because that's exactly what it was for me it was this moment I wanted to remember it was a misty day I'm running I'm actually just praising the Lord for just being in nature I'm gonna kind of come up with the color palette and the materials that I'm gonna use uh, one of the most common questions that I get from other artists is my decision process or in art, you know, what do you, how do you start? What do you do? What surface, what underpainting? And sometimes you just let the reference image and your mood determine where you go with it. That's how I roll anyway. So anyway, let's get going on this. I'm gonna let you follow me around while I pick out my materials and paint this lovely painting, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, so I still have little pastels all over the place. Uh, but what I thought I would do is show you um, why I would make certain color choices. And again, it's kind of based on the reference image. Again, I've got this little reference image. Uh, the day, sorry for my studio lights, the day was very misty and gray. And even though these little flowers feel kind of happy, I kind of wanted to keep that, that mood of how I was feeling that day. Actually, it was a blessed day. It was a little cooler here in Florida than it normally is. So it was a nicer time to run. And that's, trust me, that's good because I don't love running. I do it just because it's good for me. <laughs> um, so anyway, I wanted to keep that feeling. And, you know, I've got my choices over here. I have this little place where I keep a lot of my papers. I have more papers in some other places, but um, this is where I have like my uh, Sennelier, I've got little scraps and things too. I've got Sennelier pastel card I could choose from. Um, I've got under here um, UART papers. I've got some color fix papers. And of course, I've got all kinds of different watercolors and all of my things that I use to create um, my own pastel surfaces if I want to create my own. And um, also what I already pulled out that I had over there was this pastel mat. I've recently be become a fan of pastel mat. Can't believe it took me so long to use it. Um, but I happen to remember that I had learned something and I have not done it yet. I don't usually work on white paper with any pastel paper um, other than watercolor paper. I like, of course it's white, but I like to tone it or do a watercolor underpainting. But I knew that the pastel mat was water friendly and I had heard of other artists using it for watercolor paintings, uh, underpaintings. So I thought what I would do is do an underpainting on this white pastel mat. I'm just gonna keep it this size and obviously it's a horizontal format. And so what I'm going to do is think about what underpainting would give it that um, moody, um, calming kind of gray feeling. I don't want to use gray as the underpainting because I think I'm going to use some neutrals and some subtle, that's the word I'm looking for, some subtle colors. And I don't really want to use, I often love 
uh, underpainting's more in this color family, you know, because we use a lot of greens and a lot of blues in the sky. And a complementary underpainting is usually just beautiful for that. It's like the earth, you know. And so I didn't want that because that's going to be a little bit too contrasty um, or complementary and uh, warm. So I decided I'm going to do a cooler underpainting. I'm just going to tone this with this De La Rowney. Um, this one is the turquoise um, color of their acrylic inks. I love it. It's really bright. I've never used it on here, but just so you know, if you don't have that, if you wanna follow along with this painting lesson and you don't have this acrylic ink stuff, you can do the same thing by just finding a pastel. If you have a harder pastel, that's a little bit better to use as an underpainting. It doesn't take as up as much of the tooth. So even though pastel matte doesn't seem to have a lot of tooth because it's not really sanded like you are, but it does uh, fill up if you use the real softies first. So if you have something like this or even a new pastel, um, that's a nice color there. I know my lighting's not super great here. Um, you can basically just lightly glaze over your surface and use some water or alcohol to just tone the whole surface. So I'm just trying to give you an um, uh, alternate way to do this. Another way to do it, I'm gonna put my pastel away, is um, watercolor. If you've got yourself a little watercolor set, you can find you a nice uh, lighter. I would say don't get this too dark of a value because um, we're gonna let the pastels do that. But in here, we've got this, uh, this blue in here and this green in here. They might make for a nice combination for that cool underpainting I'm looking for. Okay, so there's one answer to a question I get is how do you determine what underpainting you're gonna do? Well, it has a lot to do with the mood and a lot to do with the kind of the direction of where you want the painting to go. So that's my goal with that. This is a portion that is actually part of my full uh, version in my Patreon group. So I actually go over all of my pastels and the reasoning for the color selections. Okay, now back to the underpainting. Okay, I have my pastel mat taped up here. Uh, I describe all the time how I tape it. You put a piece of tape on the back of it facing forward and then another piece on the front so that you can paint and all the way to the edges. I used to put tape, bordered it on my paper, but this way you've got the whole uh, painting surface to work on or paper surface to work on. I've made some notes for myself. I purposely want to try to keep a light touch. I am a little heavy handed and I just want to remember that. So I'm gonna keep referring to that hopefully. I also wanted to remember the misty, moody feel of the scene and I'm trying to keep a neutral palette. Did a quick little um, value study here just to kind of keep me on track. Time to get started with the De La Rowney acrylic ink. Now this is going to maybe seem a little bit bold in color when it goes down, but it will, whoa, should I move that over more? Cause I like to make some color notes. I've got a little room down here to do that because it will, um, it will look bold going on, but by the time we lay the pastels on it, I didn't want it to be totally dead. Okay, I know it was a misty, moody day, but I felt like this underneath color would give it some life um, and um, cool it off a bit rather than the, the warm palettes that I use usually or underpaintings. Now, this is just a little tray. You can see I use it a lot and uh, it's just nice for um, dropping in your acrylic inks. If you use acrylic inks, shake them really good because they do settle on the bottom. I'm going to give it a couple of drops. I may need more. Actually, you know, I think I'm going to get a little glass of water. Sometimes I like to apply it a little bit watered down and not full strength. So let me get that. And we're ready. Okay, I have a little dish of water. Actually, that's kind of a big dish for this, what I'm doing. And um, a couple of paint brushes and a paper towel and the paper towel I only use that um, just to dry my brush off if I've got a little bit too much on it 
that's curling up a bit. Pastel matte paper in humid climates will curl up a bit like you are paper, but uh, I haven't found it to be as bad as you are. Now, this may look like a crazy brush, but I actually like this brush. It gives a lot of texture. So I'm because my little thingy here is so small, I'll probably dip it out with this brush and then I'll probably use, I will use this one to apply. So this is fun to me. This is actually part of the awesome, relaxing um, element of painting. Um, now what I just did, I, I put water on my brush. I dipped it into this um, and added it with the water over here. See how that's a little lighter already? Not quite as dark. So I just dulled it a little bit with the water, toned it down. Okay, you see how bold that is and bright? Uh, but it's just beautiful. A little more water. Okay, one more of this. So here's what I'm going to do. Now I'm wetting the other brush with some water, drying it a little bit with the brush, and I'm just having fun here. Look at that. Isn't that neat? You know, and this is going to get covered up with pastel, so that's okay. I don't want to get my iPad. A little more water on this brush because the water helps to just blend it. And I'm working with both hands. Actually, are there any other lefties out there? Uh, holler at me in the comments if you're a lefty because um, we're in our right minds, right? <laughs> so anyway, oh, my point with that is um, we can work with both hands. I did need more water to get it to blend better. Now, there we're, now we're talking. Look at that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and utilize the fact that um, I know that values are darker down here in the foreground. So I'm just going to go ahead. It's probably all going to end up being the same color, but no, it's a little bit darker in the foreground there. And dry it off a little bit. A little more of the lighter one. And there you have it. Just kind of a, a nice, loose... I can tell I'm going to have to move my iPad when I apply the pastels. That ain't going to work. All right, there we go. We've got our little uh, really cool blue underpainting. And... I don't know. I'm just kind of excited about that. Oh, and you may have noticed too, I had already drawn off an eight by 10 area. I have these little mats that um, I prefer the ones where the, the thing is in the middle, but the, I knew the outside perimeters of this was eight by 10. So I just, it's so nice not to have to measure it, you know? So um, I usually paint outside the lines anyway. So, and those little two dropper fulls of the ink was plenty. I still have more left, so you may not need that much if you try that. Uh, just trying to save you guys on art supplies. Okay, this is the portion where I am speeding it up for the Monet Cafe channel, and the Patreon version has lots of real time. I'd say the majority real time in this. Um, a little speed, but uh, it also has a lot of commentary. You see me talking there, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and, um, but I always try to speed this up just a bit. It actually reduces the file size for uploading to YouTube and uh, helps out with uh, all of the time it would take to upload this video by, by shrinking it a bit. But I always try to speed it uh, to a minimum. Uh, I mean, there's some speed videos you see that you literally can't even see the choices that they're making. But I am still going to give you guys some commentary while I'm working here. I'm getting my sketch in here, and notice I'm I'm drawing things a bit geometrically. Uh, I often find that I have a tendency towards doing things more circular, and we can actually kind of sketch a little bit more chunky and geometrically, and uh, it gives it oh, I don't know, um, more interesting edges than rounded shapes. And so I just thought I'd explain that a little bit. I'm also explaining there how you like to have your trees or your mountains um, going up on the edges rather than trailing off your painting. Uh, I think the analogy is to have them smiling rather than frowning. You don't want the viewer's eye to fall off or run out of the painting. So that kind of keeps it kind of trapped inside the painting. And I also wanted to share that I made some different color selections as I went along. I wanted to keep the feeling I was experiencing that day, which is why I chose the title suggestion in the moment because it was just this beautiful moment. It was a misty gray day. It was unusually cool for where I live in Florida. And I was on that little jog like you saw. And um, 
it, I was just appreciating everything and uh, just kind of had a little spiritual moment. And so I wanted to remember how everything was kind of muted and neutral in color. And so what I was saying about changing my color selections, if you, as you notice right here, even though I thought these colors were quite neutral when I picked them out, uh, not so bold, they were very warm when I got them onto this blue underpainting and that's probably why you know color and value is affected by what you put it on and because the underpainting was blue or turquoise you know um the warmth was showing up even more so i and i and i actually also decided to change the flowers in my little uh value sketch i had drawn the flowers larger and I, again i wanted to remember the moment and the flowers weren't large. They were these little flowers all popping up with just almost to infinity going off into the background. Um, right now you're seeing I'm blending. Uh, I wanted to mention, um, I know I'm past it now, but what I was using for blending was a piece of chamois cloth uh, that you dry your cars with. You can use this for blending and it works quite well on pastel matte, this surface that I'm using. Pastel, um, I mean, you art paper, the chamois cloth does not work. You want to use a piece of pipe foam insulation for that. But uh, the chamois cloth works great on the pastel mat. So now I'm just kind of reestablishing some of the darks uh, and in a bit, and I'm making some visual trail of value just to keep the viewer's eye coming into the painting. I love creating depth in a painting, which is also why you see that if you just looked at the reference photo, and by the way, um, when I do these demonstrations, I always provide the reference photo as an attachment in my Patreon group. So they literally can download the reference photo and work from it. But in the reference photo, the trees, I knew they had depth. I knew they had some layers of trees, but in the photo, you couldn't see that. It looked literally like a band of trees just kind of going across the back. So it's to me, always a good, you see how, dark, how green that is? Back to how this was too warm. I'll address it in a minute when I change it from this color palette. But um, I almost always try to increase the depth in my artwork by creating that sense of um, uh, distance by value. And you can do that literally by uh, making another layer of trees, make them smaller. I have a simple little lesson on Monet Cafe. I think it's under... By the way, I have playlists. I think I need to make sure you guys know that because there's over 200 videos here in Monet Cafe and it would be so hard if you're like, I wanna find one that she has on color theory or the color wheel and you'd have to search through all 200 videos, 200 plus videos, that would be hard. Um, here, I'm sorry for jumping around. This is how I'm creating that sense of depth by cooling off some of the trees that are in the distance there. That really makes them look further away, which is my point here I'm getting to. But back to the playlist. If you wanted to find something um, on composition you know, or whatever, you literally can go to the tab up top. It'll say videos, then I think the next one is playlist. And you click playlist. And I've been trying to be faithful about this by when I create a video, to put it in a category. This one, for example, will go under the category of pastel tutorial and also underpaintings. So there's a whole playlist. I think that one might have like 20 videos. I can't remember. There's playlist for um, color value composition or color theory, I think. And uh, there's also one, back to my point, a very early video of mine that I did that um, I think it's gotten quite a few views. I have one just on drawing principles or something like that, but I, I talk about the magic tricks of art. <laughs> and it's super simple, but it explains a lot about, in a very simple way, about some of the ways and the techniques and the principles in art of how to create that sense of depth and distance in a super simple way. It's actually a great video if you wanted to do it with your kids or anybody else who's artistic. Um, so it's kind of a kind of a good little quick education. Now, I apologize for my, my big old head in the way here. Um, I'm still at the stage here where I was, I was not happy right here. I was like, this is not in the moment. <laughs> this was not what the moment was like. Um, but the neat thing is you can change your um, direction. Uh, and it's a good idea to do that. Don't keep working on something when you just feel like it wasn't right. Um, so I worked on it a bit and then I was like, you know what, not feeling it. This is too warm. The flowers are too large. I mean, I could have kept going with it, but I, it wasn't what I wanted. 
So I decided, there you go, to get a stiff uh, little bristle brush. This is kind of a stiff brush. And just brush out some of the flower. Oh, this is where I was actually just removing a flower. But in a minute, I decide, yep, go ahead. Let's get rid of some of the larger flowers. And then I start, um, later I will start cooling off or subduing the color palette. And I do that by what I'm doing right there. That's a gray pastel. Very rarely do I use gray. I use often bolder colors or, or a neutral color. But this is, um, most of those were just plain gray. And what it did is it started to create that misty moodiness. Do you see how it's already toned it down a lot? And um, it was feeling more like the day uh, and more like what I experienced that day. All right, so uh, that's it for the commentary of this video. Enjoy the rest of this. I'm going to put on some lovely music for you. Um, feel free to join our Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook. Uh, nearly 10,000 members in that group. And it might be at 10,000 now for all I know. But um, artists just helping each other every level. You don't have to feel embarrassed if you're brand new at pastels. It's just a wonderful learning and a great place to be. Um, and then, of course, my patrons. You guys know I have my own Patreon group for you guys. I get a lot more time with my patrons because uh, it's, it's just a more intimate group and um, a little more attention. We just had a contest. We had a, a, cha a painting challenge that was called 12 Days of Healing where we shared art together for 12 days and... Um, and they got awarded some good prizes. So I hope you will hang out and watch the rest of this demonstration. It really does help um, my YouTube channel here, Monet Cafe, if you watch videos longer rather than just clicking away, if you're interested, of course. And uh, also, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the little bell icon uh, that uh, alerts you whenever I post a new video. And, of course, comment, like, share, and just have a good old time. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of this, and I'll pop back in at the end.
right, I'm finishing up at this point, adding a little bit of those uh, pinks. Uh, you saw the pastel I held up was the, it's actually an iridescent Mount Vision pastel. But if I had to describe this color palette, I would describe it as uh, one half of the color wheel, basically, a little broader than just half. But it has mostly uh, cooler uh, colors and it does stretch a little bit around into the pinks and a little bit warmer greens but for the most part you don't see any oranges or yellows or reds and it really did represent the day quite well so i hope you enjoyed that and i hope in your part of the world wherever you are that you're feeling the blessings of art and painting and that you're at peace and that you're safe all right guys happy painting